Uh, appreciate everybody being on again today. Good to see everybody. First of all, I just want to uh, send my condolences to the family of uh, Willie Scott, Carolina Hall of Famer, on his passing uh, today. Thoughts and prayers uh, go out to him and uh, or go out to his family. I'm so sorry to hear of that news as well. Somebody I think a lot of and will continue to. Uh, congratulations to Ryan Suckup and Kobe Smith on their Super Bowl victory the other night. That was awesome to see. And congratulations as well to uh, Rashad Fenton and Chris LeMond's, uh on a great season with the Chiefs and, and making that game as well, which is a great accomplishment. I'm sure we'll be seeing those guys back in it uh, many more times, I'm sure, and, and extra uh, respect for Ryan Suckup, obviously a guy that was here when I was here as a coach, and to see him still performing at a high level uh, after all these years is pretty remarkable. And couldn't be happier for him and, and his success. What a, couldn't have, couldn't be a better or couldn't happen to a better guy uh, as well. Uh, excited about our five new analysts. I know that was announced uh, yesterday. Uh, really pleased with the group we were able to put together uh, there of people and, and coaches with recruiting ties in different areas that uh, will, will really be assets for us here at Carolina going forward. And, and very thankful to uh, uh, Coach Tanner and our administration and, and board for allowing us to create a few more analyst positions to uh, uh, get some more support staff people uh, in the building. Those guys uh, will be fantastic for us. And, Really pleased about those guys being here. And then obviously we're here today to talk about Montario Hardesty. Uh, uh, super pumped to make that hire. Uh, somebody that I've known of and, and followed his career uh, since he got into coaching. Great player in college. Obviously that speaks for itself. Uh, was, uh, was a player in college when I was here before and, and remember him through the recruiting process and then being a player in college. But what really attracted uh, us to him was was just the kind of person he is and, and then his story. Uh, so many coaches that I talked to when we were doing our research on Ontario, more than one coach or administrator used the word star to describe him. That They said, Shane, this guy's a future star. Another guy, Shane, he's a future star. You may not hire him this time, but you're going to be competing against him in the SEC very, very soon. Uh, people that I have a lot of respect for speak very, very highly of him, and that resonated with me. And I think his story is fantastic as well, certainly in relation to the running backs that we have uh, on our team. Again, I said it before, I feel for them. They've, they, with Montario, they, they now have their third running backs coach in less than a year. Uh, now, again, the two guys that were here before obviously left here to go to the NFL, so you can't, uh, can't fault them from that standpoint, but uh, it's tough on a running back or any position player when you have multiple position coaches in that short a period of time. And Montario and I, Montario and I were talking uh, during the interview, and he had that happen to him in college. He had multiple position coaches in college, which uh, I think will help a lot when it comes to getting in there with our guys. The fact that he has played the position at a high, high level at the college level and the NFL level is impressive to me and, and will help us in a lot of ways. Uh, anytime you can have a coach on your staff that has played the game in the NFL, which is where all of our guys want to get, I think that's a fantastic resource for our guys to have. And he's one of many that we now have on this coaching staff and in this building that have experience as, uh, as NFL players. He, his career in the NFL wasn't quite what he wanted it to be, frankly. Uh, and that's a great story for everybody on our team, not just the running backs that we all think we're all going to, they all think that we're going to go have 10 year careers in the NFL. And that's not realistic. He's a guy that had high hopes and had an unfortunate injury in a preseason game. And just like that, his career, you know, was basically over. Uh, and then at that point, he didn't say, all right, I've played in the NFL and I expect to go get hired as a big time football coach right now. He knew he wanted to get into coaching and chase that passion, chase that dream. Started out as a coach at uh, Chowan, a uh, small college. And from there, he went to Norfolk State uh, and, and worked. And then, you know, the other roles and places that he's been, and then most recently at Charlotte. I have a lot of respect for his career path and, and knowing what he wanted to do and doing everything in his power to chase a dream, to be a college football coach, and, and, and trying to continually better himself each and every year. North Carolina native. Uh, that will certainly help in recruiting. Uh, we know how important that state is to us in recruiting, and he has fantastic uh, ties up there. And then the roles that he's had, not just the place that he's been, but I think the fact that he's coached receivers uh, helps. He obviously knows the running back position. He played it at a high level like I talked about. But then also being able to get out of that comfort zone uh, from coaching running backs and be able to learn another position and coach receivers I think will do nothing but uh, help him 
going forward and help us as he jumps in that offensive staff room with uh, Coach Satterfield and the rest of the offensive staff. So he got in here today. Today was his first day. Uh, you know, Kevin Harris and, and Marshawn and all of our running backs were up here. Uh, 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 Zaquandre Rashad, all those guys were up here this morning uh, visiting with him. And I know they're excited that he's here from talking to those guys, and we are too. So fortunate we were able to hire him. Um, uh, had a lot of people that were interested in him and thankful that he decided to become a Gamecock. So with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions you guys have. Use the raise hand function, and we'll get to you as quick as we can. David Cloninger with the first one. Hey, Shane, thanks for doing this. Um, with the, the analysts now hired and obviously Montario filling that vacant spot, are you done now with, with filling out your staff? Could there maybe be a few more support staff guys added over the coming weeks? There could be. Uh, you know, there's a couple things that uh, Coach Tanner and, and I have, have discussed that are possibilities. It would have to be the – it would have to be the right person, right time, but there's a couple uh, specific guys that we've talked about for a specific role if it worked out on our end and their end. So uh, we're probably done here for the short term, but um, again, we'll see what happens here as we go forward also. But very content and very happy with where we are right now with the, uh, with the people in this building and, and the, uh, the, the connectedness that we have right now in this building, I, I really like. Mike Yuva. And I'm sure you would agree that, you know, with having a spring football practice starting spring, spring football in general is just starting a little bit later. There's some pros and cons with that. But as a new coach, teams trying to get acclimated to you guys. And then on top of that, you've had so much turnover with coaches. How much can that benefit you in this situation with having it as late as it is? It's huge. I'm so thankful that we uh, decided to do that. And there's positives to us going earlier and there's positives to going later. But the fact that we went later is perfect for us this year, uh, just for those reasons that you said, Mike. I mean, new staff, we're trying to get systems implemented. You know, Coach Satterfield and the offensive staff, they've been working since they got in here at the beginning of the month or the beginning of January. But then now today was Montario's first day, so they got to get him caught up and make sure they marry uh, everything so that they're a fit from how we're calling things. And he's got to learn it. Uh, I'm doing so many things right now outside of like X's and O's uh, that I need to get in there and dive into the schematic stuff with them uh, more and more in depth. And I'll have time to do that as we go forward. And then just the fact that, you know, 2020 was so unique for all programs, but particularly ours with uh, Coach Muschamp making a change in strength coach after the season in 2019, having a new strength coach in 2020, COVID, uh, everything that happened was certainly unique and more importantly than anything we got to get in that weight room and and get stronger and so the more time that those guys can have in there with Luke uh, before we start spring practice the better Eric Boynton Hi, Shane. I'm sure the, re the uh, hiring process is always kind of a little bit crazy for any coach in any situation, but how would you kind of describe your recent hiring process? Would you, you, re you retain guys, they leave a few days later, then all of a sudden you think you might be set in other regards, then more guys kind of leave and you have spots open again. How would you kind of describe this roller coaster hiring process you've been on? It's been a whirlwind, but, you know, it's been enlightening. I was talking with somebody this morning. I mean, I think in the end, everything has happened exactly the way, like, it, it, it should have happened and needed to happen. And, and nothing against anybody that's not here anymore, but I just think the vibe in this building right now is fantastic. And, and uh, we replaced good coaches with some really good coaches, in my opinion, and, and really excited about the group of guys that we have in here, the way that they're working together. Uh, things happen when you have good coaches. You know, people are going to try and hire them. And uh, like I've mentioned before in here, I mean, there's guys that are in this building that had opportunities to go places and they chose to stay at South Carolina. Some of the on the field coaches and some of the support staff people in this building as well. So it's not just the guys that left. I'm really pumped about the guys that stayed and, uh, and are here and, and want to be here. And it's all, you know, it's always going to be an issue. I feel like we got an amazing building of, of personnel and people in here and, and other programs know that. So there's going to be uh, other guys that have opportunities to leave, you know, men and women going forward, and you hope you make this just a fantastic environment that people don't want to leave. That's my goal each and every day, and confident that we're uh, that we're creating that. George Stoy, if you're going to get on this call, you better get your hand up and answer, ask a question. If you're going to jump on this thing, Hill McGranahan. Shane, how's Marshawn Lloyd doing with his rehab, and how much do you guys expect for him to be able to, to do once practice gets going next month? 
He's doing well. Uh, was in my office this morning, like I talked about with Kevin, and looks great. Um, I mean, he, you can tell he's a guy that, excuse me, during his rehab, uh, he didn't take that time off. I mean, he got bigger and stronger. That was obvious to see. And, and uh, you know, when you hurt a knee, you're not able to do maybe as much cardio, obviously, because you're not really able to run and do some of that stuff. So it's been important for him to get back in shape. But really like his uh, mentality, demeanor right now, and the way that he's working. And, and we're still, you know, a month and a half, I guess, or a little over a month away from starting uh, spring practice. So he's got quite a bit of time until we, until we get into it. But we're certainly excited to, you know, see what, uh, see what he looks like when we get cranked up next month. John Del Bianco. Okay, sticking on running backs, this, this is the theme of this press conference. Just how much of a comfort is it to know, you know, the talent that you have in that room returning, leading with Kevin Harris, and with Kevin specifically, how much have you gotten to know him over the last couple of months, and what do you think of him as a person and as a player watching his film? Yeah, really, uh, really like him early on before I got hired. We were off when South Carolina played Ole Miss. And I was able to watch that game that night, or maybe we had a day, a game that day. I can't remember, but anyway, I was able to watch the entire South Carolina Ole Miss game, and remember thinking, man, we got a they at the time got a great guy, a great running back right there. And and then the, there's no doubt. I mean, what he did last year on a team that didn't have the success on the field uh, that they wanted, and weren't able to throw the ball as well as you need to in this league to win. To for him and our offensive line and our entire offense to be able to you know, have such a productive year running the football uh, stood out to me and is exciting going forward as we're able to put pieces around it. But uh, been able to spend, you know, quite a bit of time with him. I'm trying to get around our guys as much as we can, popping in the weight room and popping in downstairs when they're eating and bouncing around the locker room and the training room and just getting around our guys and doing as many activities as we can uh, just in a relaxed setting. And he's certainly one of those guys. We had some phone conversations uh back in December and over Christmas break and, and then uh, since then as well. So really impressed with him and, and uh, that entire running back group. Matt Connolly. Saying the people you talked to about Monterio, why are they so confident that, that he's going to be a star as a coach? And, and what was it about him that um, made him such a great hire for you guys, you feel like? He's just a great guy. I mean, I'm, obviously I spent three years at Tennessee early in my career as a graduate assistant and, and have a lot of friends still up there whether it be in in the administration or in the equipment room and you talk to anybody up there just the way they speak of him is what kind of person he was and and they were able to see him as a player and then when he came back to Tennessee as an analyst as well they got to see him in both those worlds and or in both those roles and I think it's just the way that he treats people the one thing that kept coming up in all my conversations is just what a fantastic personality he is just a uh, uh, an electric, dynamic personality, always a smile on his face, always high energy, positive. Uh, that's what I want in this building. That's what I want this program to be about, you know, positive, high energy guys. And he's that way. He's always got a little pep in his step and always got a smile on his face. And then having a chance to, uh, uh, when we met with him uh, before or when we met with him over Zoom for the interview, I mean, it was one of those things. It was, he just stood out. Um, just kind of a, a personality that people gravitate to. Uh, I was really impressed with just his knowledge and his intelligence of just football in general. Not that I didn't think that, don't take this the wrong way, but just of people and of, and of schemes and, and the different systems he was in when he was with the Cleveland Browns. I think they had maybe like three different coordinators in three years or two coordinators in two years, whatever it was. So he had to learn a lot of different systems and that stood out to me as well. I mean, he's just been, he's been exposed. He's not young, but I mean, in a young coaching career, he's been exposed to a lot of just different styles, systems, situations, roles, and uh, was just a guy that had great experience from that standpoint. It was one of those, I was in my office talking to him on Zoom and Sat was in his office on Zoom. And we were up here late one night last week and, Soon as it was over, I mean, he walked in my office and was like, "What are we waiting for? Like, who who else do we need to talk to?" I mean, he was he was that impressive and and got it got it done shortly thereafter. George Stoyo. Hey Shane, hope you're doing well. I, uh, um, how's things in Denver? <laughs> they're great. That's actually why I'm on here. I, I don't really have necessarily a question for you, but for a very specific question for Ontario. But but while I do have you on here. Uh, I will, I guess, just ask you, when you're going through these coaching hires, you know, do you lean on people that come from your past? I know, obviously, your dad, um, but guys like Lincoln, do you look at how they handled those situations and, 
and uh, you know, kind of take advice from them as you go through these, you know, hirings? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm going to reach out to a lot of people and try and be as very thorough as, as I can and, and talk to as many different people, head coaches they've worked for, uh, uh, people they've been around, teammates. I mean, anybody that's been around these guys in different roles. And, and I think in any job, anybody, if you know, not that Montero sent a resume to me directly, but you're not always going to call references on a resume. You're going to call, you know, people they've been around and people you know and trust. And and you certainly each each guy's different. I mean, I've been some places where, if there was an opening, we sat down in the staff room and every single coach on that staff, you know, spoke up and threw out potential names. I've been on some staffs where if there was an opening, you knew nothing about it unless the head coach asked you, and you didn't find out until you guys did. Uh, who we hired. So I've been a part of different systems or different uh, philosophies when it comes to that. But I'm certainly going to rely on people I trust and, and and go back to people I know. I mean, Montario is a guy that coming out of, we talked about it during the interview, I mean, coming out of high school in North Carolina, Virginia Tech, and playing for my dad was one of the schools he, he, uh, he considered, you know, so knew his name going way back and then obviously competed against him when I was a coach here before and he was a player. So I think you look at at every single uh, uh, resource. And I think too, that I, one thing that's been beneficial as well is a lot of, you know, a lot of coaches uh, were looking for a lot of the same positions, NFL and college. So it might be an NFL team or a college team is looking for a running backs coach and, and they hire somebody else. I may reach out to that coach and, hey, who are some other guys that you came across that were in, that impressed you and things like that. And, and uh, there were some guys in, in Montario's instance, not necessarily this year, but in previous years that had interviewed him that had great things to say about him as well. Rick Henry. Hey, Shane, I was just wondering, um, did you ever have any interactions with Willie Scott when you were here before as an assistant or um, anything like that? I did not. I wish I had. Um, unfortunately, no. I mean, somebody that I knew of and, and uh, have always had tons of respect for, but not a lot of one-on-one -on -one interactions when I, with him when I was here before, unfortunately. Phil Kornblut. Uh, hey, Shane. Phil. The one spot that you still have left in your uh, – 2021 class um do, do you sense you're getting close to filling that no i mean there was actually a report last week i saw from one of you guys that somebody we've offered a scholarship to that we're full speed ahead on which i've never had a conversation with so that or offered a scholarship to so that was uh disappointing to see some of that stuff but no uh somebody that we've got that in our back pocket that uh, we'll certainly utilize that um, going forward and, and see the best situation that fits our program. Don't have anything imminent, no one right now that we're talking to. And, and uh, you know, at this point, it may potentially be something after, uh, after spring practice as well. Eric Boynton. Yeah, Shane, you talked about having uh, your positive, high-energy guys. Is there an extra level of energy maybe in this entire coaching room due to the fact that you have a bunch of guys, for the most part, this is probably the best job, the most high stature job they've had in their coaching career versus other coaches that were maybe just trying to hold on or had been at you know, five different SEC schools, that type of deal. Yeah, I mean, I think it worked out that way in some ways. It wasn't like I went into it and said, let me find you know 10 guys that, that, uh, that this is going to be the best job they've ever had. And I don't know if all of those guys would say that. I hope they do. I think it just kind of worked out that I was looking for 10 great people, coaches, recruiters, and, and that's certainly the way it worked out. But you got a bunch of hungry guys uh, in, uh, in this building, players and coaches. And, and, and regardless of whether they've been at a high level or not, whether this is their second time around at an SEC school, or I think Greg Atkins, this will be his third SEC school that he's worked at. Torian Gray's been in the NFL. I mean, you got a lot of guys that have been a lot of different places, but uh, I know we got 10 guys in here that really work well together, that are hungry and passionate and, and uh, ready to compete and, and uh, go see what we can be about. Hilmer Grenner. Kind of a broad question, I guess, but what are you guys hoping to accomplish as a staff and, and what do you guys want to see the team accomplish over these next six weeks before spring ball gets going? Really, it's still uh, attacking the weight room and, and doing everything we can to get in there. I mean, with, with Luke and continue to get stronger and, and he's he's been phenomenal and, and just talking to the guys. I mean, they're all coming to my office raving about how stronger they've gotten. I mean, uh, 
Kristen and nutrition has done a, an amazing job with these guys just as far as like body weights and where we want to get them, getting some guys up, getting some guys down. I mean, uh, Jordan Strawn, for example, I think has put on close to 20 pounds since he got here, you know, and this is a guy that it's good weight. I already led the nation in sacks last year, and then you're able to continue to develop his body with what we're doing from a nutrition standpoint with her and her staff, and then Luke in the weight room, and just continuing to uh, develop these guys uh, on and off the field is our mentality right now before we even get into a ton of scheme and things like that. So we'll, we'll, uh, we're, we'll, we'll, we're all weight room pretty much right now. As we get a little bit closer to spring practice, we'll start getting into some, you know, football specific walkthroughs and things like that that we're able to do before we start practice. But we got a lot of a lot to get done uh, between now and then from just a, a physical and, and mental development standpoint. Jen Del Bianco. Jane, with Shaq Wilson joining the program as a defensive analyst, what do you remember about him as a player, his intangibles, his knowledge of the game as a linebacker, and what does he bring to that that side of the ball on that staff? All that. I mean, just a guy that always just had a smile on his face and, and just didn't have a bad day. Uh, was a great worker, uh, really uh, productive player that was football smart, was good on all of our special teams, desire to get better. Um, I like his experience, the fact that he's been, you know, he's been in the weight room and he's been an analyst as well. So he's kind of been, been in both those worlds and has knowledge on, on both of it, both of them. And somebody like him and, and Byron that were dying to, to be here. And from the time I, from the time I got the job, had those guys in mind and was just trying to get all the pieces to fit. But two guys that I've had in mind to try, if I ever got this opportunity that I wanted to get back here because I've, I know how much Carolina means to them. So to be able to get both those guys back uh, was great. And, and Shaq's very knowledgeable just in some of our, you know, staff meetings that we've had, just talking football and X's and O's. Some of, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's got a good mind, you know, for the game of football for sure. And, um, and, and then the fact, too, that, you know, where he's from in Florida as well, Jacksonville will always be a big area for us in recruiting and always should be as close as it is to us. And, and the fact that he knows a lot of people down there as well, you know, is an added bonus. And Josh Kendall. Shane, you just mentioned Kristen. Um, along with Kristen, you've got Jessica Kim Fields, who you talked about in your opening press conference. A lot of women who are in high-profile roles in your organization. As a guy who's been around football, his whole life when did that stop feeling unusual or different for you that you had women you know in important staff positions on football teams although it's still clearly not the norm it's a good question um I don't know if I ever really thought about it you know from that from that standpoint Josh I mean Kim was Kim was here before uh when I was when I was here and and was fantastic when I was here before she worked specifically with the assistant coaches then and was brilliant uh, at her role and what she does and still is has only gotten better since the time you know that, that that I left and and you know probably the one thing when I was here before was we you didn't schools didn't have a, necessarily a position that Jessica's in right now like of on-campus recruiting you know at the time it was you know, the coaching staff and then Robbie Lyles was here and Patrick Shine and Scott Morgan. And that was basically our recruiting staff, period. And um, and then those departments have grown over time where, you know, somebody like, you know, Jessica can get in here and, and be phenomenal at what she does uh, as well. And then we didn't have, you know, at least an in-house uh, nutritionist like we do now with Kristen when I was here before. So I think a lot of it is just the, the staffs and the way that they've grown but in my mind, and I've always been this way, male, female, black, white, it don't matter. I mean, the guy, if you can do a great job, then, then I want you on the staff if you believe in the things that I believe in. And, and we're all on the same page and all on the same team going in the same direction. Uh, the more of those people we can get in there, the build, in, get in the building, uh, the better. But I'm very, very thankful to have uh, those ladies here with me because they're fantastic. Uh, they're fantastic at, at what they do and, and uh, definitely need to keep them around for sure.